YouTube as a platform is probably my preferred and my go-to place for learning. I'll watch tutorials about how to do things, or I'll listen to reviews about different books or other resources and things that people use. But just like every platform, there are some uncommon features that YouTube allows you to have that can really help you when learning things on YouTube. In this video, I'm going to go over some of the more uncommon features that you can actually use when you're browsing around YouTube to help you learn a little bit more. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay part of the conversation. For free Notion templates, check out the link in the description below. Now, those of you that aren't YouTube creators or video creators, you may not know what vidIQ or TubeBuddy are. They're actually specific tools to help video creators, YouTubers, find out different pieces of information that YouTube gives us. These don't really help with the learning process, but I figured I'd let you know just so you understand where some of the other numbers and screens come from. Now I'm going to search Notion app, and those of you familiar with the channel will know what Notion is, but essentially it's the application that I manage my life on, task management, project management, etc. Now when I want to learn more about the app or find where other people are using the app, I'll type that into search, and then if I see a video that I haven't seen or I don't recognise, I'll then save it to my watch later list. And what that does is put it in a watch later playlist that I can go back to at any time, and it will have saved that video in there as a queue. Alternatively, you could set it up as a queued video, so you may want to watch that next, but I personally don't use that that much. An uncommon feature that I think people should be using when they're browsing YouTube videos is actually filtering their videos. So when you type in a search term, it will give you a search ranking. But if you use the filter feature, you can actually filter away longer videos if you want to watch short videos, or filter away short videos if you want to watch long videos, and you can filter for loads of different things like upload date, type, duration, feature, and you can sort by specific things as well. Now for me, I consume a lot of information because I spend a lot of time on YouTube. So a lot of the videos that actually come up when I type in Notion app, I've actually seen. So what I'll do is I'll sort those videos by upload date, and then it will show me the most recently uploaded Notion videos. Then I can save it to my watch later playlist. So I have all of those videos ready for me to watch. When you've watched a video or you found a channel that you think may be interesting, when you head over to that channel page, I'm going to use my channel as an example, you can actually see links in the banner. And a lot of creators use this to help you find them on different social media platforms, but in some cases they link to a website or another learning resource that either they're in charge of, they control, or maybe goes elsewhere. In my case, that is where you'll find my public Notion page that has a load of free templates. Now when you're scrolling down the channel, it's going to be very individual to how the creator has set up that homepage. A lot of creators will have playlist, most popular playlist, or most popular videos on that homepage. But what I tend to do is look at the recommended playlist section, because then I'm looking at the most common playlists that other people have watched. I put that playlist on my channel page, but I find that a lot of other creators use that channel page for different things. So what I tend to do is go to that playlist tab, find that recommended playlist, and then I can work out how much information, what other information this particular creator has made on this specific topic. That way it allows me to look specifically at this creator at what they have done so I don't have to go into the YouTube search again and then try and find the video that they've done on that thing. Something else that's really useful is when you go into the video tab, you can actually sort by different videos. And I typically, when I go into a new channel, will sort by most popular, because a lot of the time the most popular video that they have will have the most views, and is normally the most viewed because it is a good topic or an interesting video. And I'll go down that list and add those videos to my watch later playlist, and then I may subscribe depending on the type of content that they're creating. Another thing that's also useful is when you found a creator that focuses on a specific topic, if you go into their channels page, a lot of the time they have linked other channels that either have similar topics, similar conversations, so instead of having to go to YouTube search and finding the channels that talk about that thing, you've found those channels already there because they've linked it within their channel. So if anyone was to stumble on my channel, they could see all of the other creators that do similar type of content. A recent feature YouTube's actually added is chapters and timestamps into videos. Previously you could add timestamps, but it didn't add chapters. So all of my videos, when you go down to that scroll bar, you can see what that specific area is going to be talking about. Not every video is going to have these chapters, it's down to the creator to put the timestamps in. But what this means is you can look at that timestamp bar and just go to the chapter that you need. Obviously for longer videos this is much more useful. 
But for me, as soon as I see that there are chapters, I'll go straight into the description and then look at all of the different timestamps that they've put chapters for. And while I'm in the description, a lot of the times I'll have a look at the other links that they have there, because a lot of the times it's popular playlists, popular videos, or maybe in my case, a place to ask a specific question to the creator. So in every single description of my video, you can ask me a personal question, and that will be answered on the live stream that I do every Sunday. If you're unsure how to locate that watch later list, it's actually over in your sidebar on the left and then you can go through and watch all those videos there and you can see I've got some in there that have just been kept in there and some that I'm going to watch later on. I've gone over a few different ways to sift through a creator's content, but there's actually a search bar inside the creator's channel. So you can search for a specific term inside the creator's channel for any videos they've done on that thing. So in my case, if you're looking for a relations video, you can type relation into that search bar and it will come up with all of those videos that have relation into the title. And you can do this on any individual channel. So if you find another channel that's really useful and you want to see if they've done a video on a specific thing, you can type that thing into the search bar and find out. Now this search system is actually very similar to how I actually use my Notion public page. Because when you go into my page, you go into templates, you can search through my templates for the specific thing you're looking for. So when you go into that search bar, you can type in task, for example, and all of the templates that have task in the name will be found. And it works exactly the same with all of the other pages for properties, blocks, formulas, shortcuts, everything. So it's easy to find what you're looking for. If you're new to Notion and you want to learn a little bit more, check out this video over here and I'll see you there.